So I originally wrote I, I originally wrote the script for tonight's show last year, and I did stream it, but nobody watched it. So I'm reusing it. I'm gonna redo it, updated it a little bit. I was originally gonna do it last year because last year in in 2020 and 2021 there was no All Saints Wake due to the coronavirus pandemic. Everything got super duper delayed and pushed back until this year. And in the beginning of the year, we had the air quotes 2021 event, but it was really this year. So this month we are celebrating the second All Saints Wake for 2022. And it was pretty cool because they added this area, White Pumpkins Home, and you can't go in it, which is a damn shame, but you can kick it in her yard here and it's all decorated and it's pretty snazzy. I really like the decorations a lot. It's really cool because I mean, like, this is the stuff that gets put up around the city states, you know, like that. Some of these guys up here, you know, those mobiles. And then there's like some coffins floating around, but this is, this is really good. A little pack of bat pumpkins, spooky trees. Classic Halloween fair, right? My OST, Fog of Phantom, spooky music. Here's the old introduction. And this was actually the first time that I started in on the plan to make lore videos, but more IRL lore and history instead of just in-game lore. I think that there's enough people that do the in-game lore. Not that I would be adverse to covering it or talking about it, because Ultimately, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do what makes me happy. I'm going to do what I think is fun. Tonight, I will be taking you through some of the IRL and in-game history of the Halloween celebrations in Final Fantasy XIV and a touch of Final Fantasy XI's history as well. Because you can't really talk about All Saints Week without some uh, Harvest Festival. Holiday events and MMOs, they range from minimal temporary graphics and to-do lists to some more of the involved events like in final fantasy 14 we've had multiple events with instances where you go and do activities and they have their own mechanics and rules the two fan favorites the hawk manor instance where you uh have a party shared sanity meter and then there's also the there was also the valentine's day one where you do the tandem maze uh, but halloween is one of my favorite in real life holidays so i usually have fun you know checking out the cities and the events and seeing all the decorations and stuff i get all the items right but i was going through my inventories recently and i found out that i am actually missing a couple years worth of items and, and i think just in being careless i possibly um removed or, or otherwise lost some in-game items like the pumpkin candlestick for yard decorations I don't have, but I did the event that year. So for the in-game lore, All Saints Wake is a time of year we all know as a celebration of the dead rekindled by the Continental Circus after the Calamity and the release of A Realm Reborn. The celebration has its roots in ancient tradition where the Twelve will honor the souls of heroes dead to a feast in the firmament. The long past saints who grace the crystal leaves Danifin, Randolph, Lafme, who are among the named saints. Each leave is adorned with a different saint known for their mighty deeds in Eorzea's past. Well, with the saints gone for the, the wake, the All Saints Wake, uh, the land is left unprotected from creatures of darkness and the mortal inhabitants of the realm find various traditions to cope with the paranormal activity. Cities are guarded with warding lanterns, travelers dressed as demons in disguise, and adventurers with their arms and might. As the years passed on, the horror gave way to celebration in honor of the saints and the adventurers who protect the celebrants, as well as some devious fun in celebrating horrors and monsters. And of course, we know that All Saints Wake is very safe. Nothing bad happens, and there's definitely no demonic families attempting to lure the souls of the mortals into a trap. Using the Internet Wayback Machine, which is one of my favorite things in the entire world, you can still see announcements and the results of Zam Network's 2010 Jack-O-Lantern Contest. Now, this was held, usually held in honor of Final Fantasy XI's Harvest Festival. This was the year that Final Fantasy XIV was, was out. There's no in-game event, but 
the official Lodestone site at the time did actually announce the, the contest. I remember we briefly had this page up during a previous stream talking about the early days of 1.0 and such. And I showed off the rewards and we made fun of the, the controller. Halloween is just around the corner and the citizens of Eorzea have likely already begun their preparations for the spookiest and creepiest time of year. In order to do our part to get everyone in the spirit of things, the Zam Pumpkin Carving Contest is back for its fourth year. Get your knives and scrapers ready in what should be a fun and exciting chance to display both your creativity and love for Eorzea. The grand prize is a package that includes two Final Fantasy XIV soundtracks, a Moogle plush, one Guild Leaf strap, which we looked at and is really cool, the Ridiculous controller, and then three months of Zam Premium membership. First place gets the Moogle plush, two months of Zam Premium, and second place got the controller and one month of Zam Premium. Now let's see here how to enter. Limit one approved entry per person. And you just give your in-game information, your account information. And then at least one pumpkin, or a photo of the pumpkin in light and one lit in the dark. There are the rules. All pumpkin entries must be carved by the entrant. It must have been carved in October 2010. No offense from pornographic entries. Everything must be safe for work, etc., etc. Just a pretty standard rules. This year, the Zam team will be choosing 25 finalists. That's a lot. These contests were big. Um, I put out a tweet thread about the Ballista Royale contest, which was a PvP tournament in Final Fantasy XI, and it had thousands of people involved. Um, let's see here. Oh, and we could even take a look back at 2008 and 2009's Final Fantasy XI. Now, not all of these load. I don't remember which ones don't load, but the, some of these were not properly archived. This is the White by Technus Derima from Besaid server. And in the light, it looks kind of weird, but dang, that looks really cool, huh? Pumpkin Praise, seriously creepy and scary. That must have been great for scaring kids. That'd be a nice universal one. You could use that anywhere you go. This one, um, this is the Collector's Edition Pumpkin. This one, you can clearly see. Here's the Warrior of Light. And here is Heidelin flying over him to give him the Spider-Man kiss. Here we have the super spoopy Aramon. And I like this one. This is my favorite, to be honest. Um, and they didn't give any server information, but they were a finalist. So it's really cool because there's almost no actual cuts through the pumpkin, except for maybe right here and right here. And it gives it that red glow, which I think is rad. I like this Dodo one, too. This one was done... I'll, this one's also really creative. Doesn't have a photo archived, but you can still see it here. Here's his, here's his beak and his eyes up on top, and they curve down the curvature of the the pumpkin. This Drake one is cool. Another arm on, Limpsilomensa flag, a pair of moogles and a crystal, and a ram. And then here's all of the other entries. Oh, let's look at this Garlean soldier. Looks like he's. Uh, more of a scarecrow than a soldier. There's a hemp and hat. That one's pretty cool. A couple cactuars. That one's pretty creepy looking. I like these bomb ones, but this one is really kind of cool because don't those look familiar? They're labeled as fire elementals. We know what they really are. That's well, very clearly Hydaelyn and Zodiac. Can't fool us. Oh, and it was made by Lucifer Hawk on Fable. They look very much like the cave drawings, the, the prehistoric Hydaelyn and Zodiac. So that was the entries. Actually, I'm, I didn't plan this, but I am going to take a look back at some of the 11 entries. If this will load. I don't know if this will load. This is unplanned detour. Oh, wow, yeah. This was worth it. That Tonberry is actually green. How cool is that? There's a ninja Fomor. The Fomors were these zombie type um, enemies in some of the in-game caves. This is adorable. Trick or treat. Um, let's see here. Oh my god, look at this Chantoto. Look at this Promethea. Holy hell, look at the Chocobo chick. Even with the shading, that is beautiful. Tales from the Crypt Taru, and it's a spooky Taru jack o' lantern head. Oh my god. And it's even got the auto translate. You can raise three. You can have this. Um, it's the Sahagan. 
Oh my god, these are really good. The Halloween Parade. Oh my goodness, these are amazing. Yeah, the uh, the eleven chads definitely uh, take the cake here. Jack Mandy head, and it's a Mandragora. Uh, Juno flag. Um, let's see. Fenrir looking really cool. Coraloka tunnel, terrible, terrible place. It's a Bastic bomb, bomb. Taru Taru with the little pumpkin hat. These are absolutely amazing. These are really good. And Shiva. Look at that. They got a little hat on their jack-o'-lantern. It's a little Taru Taru. Yeah, this is a good detour. There's the the looking for party icon. See, in Final Fantasy XI, the, the exclamation point wasn't used for quests. It was an icon that went up next to your nameplate when you were looking for a party. So people could search you out and add you to their, their farms. Carrying on here. So All Saints Week was first celebrated in-game in 2011, a year and a month after the official release of 1.0. Players received some minor quests from imps and ran around the city-state surrounded by jack-o'-lantern masks and costume NPCs. It was actually a, it was a pretty small event, but we have a video to share. So this is what um, All Saints Week was in... Um, 1.0. Oh. See, we don't have the animated, um, we don't have the animated coffin stand dioramas. See, and this is where he tells a story about how the, the gods take the saints up to the firmament to celebrate their heroism. But with the saints gone, the land is bereft of their protection and we mortals are rendered helpless. We'll uh, skip ahead through the exposition, brother. See, and then he goes out and he, he talked to the trickster imps. And um, so in this one, they gave you little trivia things, little clues that you had to find. And then I think at the end, he shows off the reward. Yep. So this is where people got the first pumpkin heads. Which now you have to buy off of the Mog Station, the online store. The, uh, the in-game cash shop to get them now. The uh, quest completion music was awesome. <laughs> All right, put the hat on. Put the hat on. Look at that lag. Holy cow, that's terrible. So you can see here, this was the first poster. This was taken from the lodestone, of course. Game and Escape still has their walkthrough from the 2011 up, and you can still see the original screenshots from the event, as well as instructions on how to complete it. All Saints Wake is very obviously an analog to the real-world celebration of Halloween, which has its own awesome and unique history and legends, but in its execution, it is very heavily informed by the Harvest Festival from Final Fantasy XI. The use of trickster characters and handing out treats or mechanics that... Um, are, are reused pretty frequently. The earliest online records of the Harvest Festival are from 2003, where we get the mildest of backstories. Yeah, this page is old and crumbling and decaying, and it is it is passing away. So it's important that we uh, that we archive these. It's from October 28th, 2003. Trick or treat. Lately, it seems as if the inhabitants of Sandoria, Bastok, and Windurst have been planning something a little different during this year's Harvest Festival for the children and adventurers of these lands. It'll be a time to scare the pants off people and to snag more treats than the next person. That's what Vanadiel Halloween is all about. Some children may masquerade as skeletons, while others may appear as ghosts from Elvon Past. There are many ways to get treats from fellow adventurers, but it's up to you to figure out the best way. Halloween is nearing, so all you adventurers get out there and start cooking up your most delectable treats. It was only four days for the event. Now it's normal for events to run for a couple weeks, at least. Um, if not longer. Uh, this festival will take place across the three countries, Sandoria, Windows, and Bastic. Walk around town and look for townsfolk who are dressed up for the event. If you happen to run into one of these townsfolk, don't forget to give him or her a treat. But don't give out the same treat over and over again to the same person. How would you feel if you received a sack with only licorice in it? Rather, enjoy the different costumes and give your treats out to as many people as possible. 
The Harvest Festival exists to celebrate harvest time, and they don't even really have it differentiated from real Halloween, calling it Van Adeel Halloween several times. Regardless, for a decade, the major autumn in-game event for Final Fantasy XI and XIV revolved around costume NPCs and handing them treats to earn costumes of our own. So I am working on a possible video focusing on the changes of the Harvest Festival from XI. That'll be, who knows, maybe next year. So with All Saints Wake breaking the mold a few months after the release of A Realm Reborn, All Saints Wake 2013 introduced the Continental Circus, a troupe of performers whose costumes look all too real and who appear without a plausible reason. In this first event, people barely a month into ARR were treated to an entertaining story revolving around the Continental Circus and a nation-hopping questline. There are concerned citizens wary of their visitors' intentions, and no one is quite sure where they came from. In fact, local governments and their adventurers' guilds assume it was each other that brought the troupe to Eorzea. The adventurers agree to help keep an eye on the circus, and indeed it is revealed that the impresario, the leader of the troop, is in fact a demonic imp. The adventurers agree to keep the imp secret as he assures us that all he means, that he means no harm and only wants to delight and entertain the good citizens. It is made clear to the player that the impresario is attempting to bring about the night of devilry, but the real ends of the task are left ambiguous. And there's our boy, that's the impresario. Um, we haven't seen him for a few all Saints Wakes. Following the design of Harvest Festival before it, All Saints Wake uses traditional real-world Halloween and autumn-inspired imagery combined with elements from inside the game world that mesh with the aesthetic. In the beginning years, the use of imps alongside jack-o'-lanterns and candelabras completed the decor. However, as the years have progressed, the Continental Circus has adopted its own unique style along traditional elements and game elements added over the years. The Impresario takes on a Jack Skellington look, uh, while after the introduction of the Lupine Wolfman and Stormblood, werewolves were added to the overall aesthetic. Traditional vampires, werewolves, and ghosts have intermingled with imps, armands, and void arc elements to decorate the Aorzean city-states, and the Hawk Manor as a haunted house have grown the celebration into a fan favorite among the events. But as somebody on the official forums in 2021 saying, Sigh, the only event I really care about is the only one that always gets cut off. I'd rather they postpone the new expansion, but I know I'd be alone in that. And of course, that person is talking about postponing and Walker again. Um, in recent years, the addition of temporary costumes to glamour your character into popular NPC characters in game models, complete with control over emotes, is a big moment for our peers and content creators across the internet. Since this event, every year except for 2020 and 2021, due to the coronavirus outbreak, adventurers and warriors of light have joined in various events like parades and haunted houses while keeping a watchful eye over the demonic continental circus, always making sure that both their treats and treats remain safe and sweet.